Hi guys, this is Mrs. Rooker. Um, I'm going to have you guys pause the video and do review questions one, two, and three, and then unpause the video and I will show you the answers. All right, so number one, you should have this formula memorized. It is S equals R theta, where theta is in radians. So pretty simple formula, have that memorized. Um, what is sine of zero? Sine of zero is zero. And then number three, if cosine of t equals three-fifths, then find sine of t if t is in quadrant four. So let's graph this, quadrant four. Um, cosine is three over five, meaning um, adjacent is three and hypotenuse is five. So if I draw this here, the hypotenuse is five. And the adjacent is going to be 3. So that means um, your x is 3. And the hypotenuse is 5. I'm going to create a right triangle here. Uh, 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. So that must be 4. But it's going to be negative because it's going downward. Uh, so that's the other side. And we're supposed to be finding sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of... That should have been t right there. Opposite of t is going to be negative 4, and hypotenuse is 5. So your answer should be negative 4 fifths. All right, next section. Recall the ratios for sine a, cosine a, and tangent a in a circle of radius r where a is in radians or degrees. So all you need to know for this is that cosine of a is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And that's going to be the same as the x over the r. r meaning the radius of the unit circle. All right. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, now pause the video and fill out the rest of these on your own. And then when you unpause it, I will have them all filled out for you. So here are all your answers. Um, and then just remember for tangent, uh, tangent is the same as sine of A over cosine of A. Meaning that cotangent, which is the reciprocal of that, is going to be cosine of A over sine A. Alright, next section. Uh, let's look, or sorry, first let's work on the signs in each quadrant. Given each situation, tell which quadrant uh, angle A terminates or lies. You can use a smart trig class, or you can use XY coordinates to guide you. I'm just going to do a smart trig class, which is an acronym. Um, we start in the first quadrant with A, and then you go counterclockwise uh, around the quadrants. So S would go in quadrant two, T would grow in quadrant three, and C would go in quadrant four. So A smart trig class is how you can remember uh, those letters. Uh, A stands for all, oops, meaning all of the trig functions will be positive in quadrant one. S stands for sine, meaning only sine and its reciprocal are going to be positive in this quadrant. And then uh, tangent and its reciprocal will be positive in quadrant three. And then cosine and um, its reciprocal uh, secant will be positive in this quadrant. All right, um, so what I'm going to do for these ones is just do a check mark. Um, for which quadrants apply to each of these. And then the, the quadrant that has um, two check marks is going to be the quadrant that works for both of them. All right, so the first one, cosine is greater than zero. So cosine is positive. 
cosine is going to be positive in quadrant 1, because they're all positive in quadrant 1, and quadrant 4. Um, the other requirement that we're looking at is sine has to be greater than 0 also. So if sine is greater than 0 in the first quadrant, because they're all greater than 0 there, and sine is uh, positive there. Quadrant 1 is the only quadrant that um, works for both of those requirements. I'll do the same thing on the next one. Uh, so sine has to be less than zero. So sine is negative. Um, that's going to be here and here because sine is positive in uh, one and two. Um, and then cosine has to be greater than zero. So cosine has to be positive. Cosine's positive here. Cosine's also positive here. So quadrant four is the only quadrant that works for both requirements. Um, I'm going to have you pause the video and do the next two on your own, and I'll put those answers up. And just, so you should have gotten Q3 for both of those examples. Um, and then the next example, we have cosecant, which remember is the reciprocal of sine. Um, so it's going to be positive whenever sine is positive. So that's going to be here and here. And then the next one is tangent has to be less than zero. So tangent has to be negative. Tangent is going to be negative here. And tangent's going to be negative here. Because tangent will be positive when they're all positive and positive in Q3. So the only one that works for both is Q2. All right, and then the last one here. Um, remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So um, we're going to look at when cosine is less than zero, when cosine is negative. That's going to be here and here. And then um, cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So we're looking to see when cotangent is greater than zero or cotangent is positive. Um, so that's going to be in um, quadrant three. And then tangent is also positive in quadrant one. So this is the one that fits both requirements. So my answer is Q3. All right, pause the video if you need to catch up on all that. We'll move on. Once you know your basic trig values, uh, you will know all other values for those functions with coterminal angles. Just remember to check your quadrant as well. Get a coterminal angle within one revolution and use the reference angle to find the value. Um, so reference angles, um, we've talked about this before in other videos or in previous days, but a reference angle is a positive acute angle measured to the x-axis in a coordinate plane. This is what it looks like. So if you have an angle that terminates in quadrant one, let's say it's about 45 degrees, all the angles that terminate in quadrant one um, are pretty easy to find the reference angle of. Um, it's just an acute angle measured to the closest part of the x-axis, which is just going to be here. The reference angle on a 45 degree angle is just 45 degrees because that's already an acute angle. So easy in quadrant one. Quadrant two, let's say I have um, a 100 degree angle. That's not an acute angle. I need to measure an acute angle to the closest side of the x-axis, so here. So this is going to be my reference angle. Um, to the other x-axis would be um, 180 degrees, so this is just going to be 80 degrees for the reference angle. All right, in quadrant four, sorry, quadrant three, Let's say we have um, 200 degrees. So 200 degrees. Um, and I'm going to measure it, an acute angle, to the closest side of the x-axis. So we're always measuring to the x-axis. Um, 200 degrees is 20 degrees past 180. So the reference angle is 20 degrees. And then same deal in quadrant four. 
Let's do radians in this one though. Let's do let's do eleven pi over four. Or sorry, eleven pi over six. So all the way around the circle to eleven pi over six. Remember, all the way around the circle would be 12 pi over 6. So to complete this, I would just need one more pi over 6. So the reference angle here is going to be pi over 6. Reference angles are actually really easy to find when you're dealing with radians because it's just going to be pi over whatever the denominator was on your fraction. Okay. Oops. Sorry, guys. the reference angle for each and then find the exact value for each so I am actually just going to go through all of these really quick and find the reference angle because that should be really quick and really easy to do since these are all written in radians so the denominator on the first one is 4 and all of the denominators in that first row are 4 so the reference angle is pi over 4 for all of them. Which means in order to find cosine, sine, and tangent on those, you need to know what cosine of pi over 4 is, what sine of pi over 4 is, and what tangent of pi over 4 is. And you should hopefully already have those uh, memorized. All right, the next row, all the reference angles are going to be pi over 6. Pi over 6, pi over 6, and then the last row, all the reference angles are pi over 3. Alright, so I'm a very visual person. I'm going to draw a lot of pictures on these. Uh, so on this first one, either in my mind or on paper, I'm going to visualize what this looks like. So 9 pi over 4 um, is going to be over 1 full revolution because all the way around the circle would be 2 pi. Um, and 9 pi over 4, or actually um, 2 pi, if I wanted to give that a, a denominator of 4, um, would be the same as 8 pi over 4. So 8 pi over 4 would be all the way around the circle once. So this is going to be all the way around the circle once, but then I'm also going to go 1 pi over 4 past that. So this angle is going to go all the way around the circle once and then terminate in quadrant 1. So since this terminates in quadrant 1, um, we can figure out if it is positive or negative for cosine. So A, smart, trig, class will help us to determine if it's going to be positive or negative. All of the ratios are going to be positive in quadrant one. So we know our answer is going to be positive. And then you just need to find cosine of the reference angle. So cosine of pi over four. And cosine of pi over four is always root two over two. So that right there is my answer. So you need to find what the reference angle is. You need to find what quadrant the um, angle terminates in. And the quadrant that the angle terminates in determines the sign using a smart trig class. And then um, the reference angle helps you to determine what uh, sine, cosine, or tangent is going to equal. All right, so same thing on the next one. I'm going to draw a little picture. Okay, remember 8 pi over 4 would be one full revolution. Another 8 pi over 4 would put you at 16 pi over 4. And this is just slightly less than 16 pi over 4. So that means we're going slightly less than two full rotations. We're just going 1 pi over 4 less than two, two full rotations. That means our angle is going to terminate here in quadrant 4. All right, and then we have to determine if sine is going to be positive or negative there. So A, smart, trig, class. 
sine is actually going to be negative in quadrant four. So we're going to have negative, and then remember, uh, sine of pi over four is root two over two. All right, and then the next one, negative 11 pi over four. So when we draw our picture, remember we're now going clockwise, not counterclockwise. Um, eight pi over four would be one full rotation. And then we are going three pi over four past that. So if we go three pi over four past that, um, one pi over four would be would terminate in this quadrant. Three pi over four would terminate in quadrant three. So we terminate over here in Q three. A smart trig class tangent is positive in quadrant three. So this is going to be positive, and then tangent of pi over four is one. Because remember, tangent is the same as sine over cosine. And if sine and cosine were both root 2 over 2, if you divide something by itself, you get 1. So tangent of pi over 4 is always 1. And then it's positive or negative depending on the quadrant. All right. Next one, now we're dealing with a different reference angle. So this re reference angle is pi over 6. I'll draw myself a little sketch. Negative 13 pi over 6. Again, we're going clockwise because it's negative. Um, a full rotation would be 12 pi over 6. If you reduce 12 pi over 6, you get 2 pi. So 12 pi over 6 would be one full rotation. We're going one full rotation and then a little bit more because um, this is one more than um, full rotation. One more pi over 6. So we terminate in um, quadrant 4. So Q4. And then do A smart trig class. Um, cosine would be positive in that quadrant, but sine is not. So sine will be negative in that quadrant. And then um, pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And because it is in that fourth quadrant, it's going to be negative. If you ever forget all of these, you can use your unit circle to help remind you of, uh, of this. I drew a unit circle over here. Uh, so for pi over 6, remember we can draw um, our coordinate points. Coordinate points for each of these. And they're always over 2. For all of them. And then we go 1, root 2, root 3, and then 1, root 2, root 3. So if you need to find, um, for example, on that example I just did, sine of pi over 6. If you forgot what sine of pi over 6 is, remember sine is the same as your y coordinate. Cosine is the same as your x-coordinate. So sine of pi over 6 is going to be 1 half. So negative 1 half there. All right, now we're going to be doing cotangent of 19 pi over 6. So 19 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6 would be one full rotation. Now we're going counterclockwise again. There's no negative. So this would be 12 pi over 6. But then I need to go 7 pi over 6 past that. Um, so 1 pi over 6 past that would be in quadrant 1. 5 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2. 7 pi over 6 is in quadrant 3. So this is where my angle terminates, in quadrant 3. A smart trig class. We're supposed to be finding cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent. And tangent is positive in quadrant 3. So cotangent is also positive in quadrant 3. All right, so we're trying to find cotangent, um, which is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent would be 
sine over cosine. Um, so cotangent is going to be uh, cosine over sine. Cosine is root 3 over 2. And sine is 1 over 2. When I reduce this, dividing fractions is um, like multiplying by the reciprocal. Those cancel, we get uh, root 3 over 1, so just root 3. Alright, so now we're going to do cosecant of uh, 17 pi over 6. Remember, 12 pi over 6 would be one full rotation. So we're going to go one full rotation, but then 17 is 5 more than 12. So we're going to go a full rotation, and then 5 pi over 6 past that. 5 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2. And we're doing cosecant. Scott Marriott, if you're still in the building, please call Marilyn at 34001. Sorry about that little interruption. Alright, um, so we're in quadrant three and we're doing a cosecant, which is, remember, the reciprocal of sine. Um, so A, smart, trig, class. Sine is positive in quadrant two, so cosecant will also be positive there. And then um, we need to do cosecant of pi over 6. So remember, sine of pi over 6 is going to be 1 half. So the reciprocal of that for cosecant is going to be 2 over 1 or 2. So our answer should be positive 2. All right, um, next one, 23 pi over 3. So 6 pi over 3 would be one full rotation. So we are almost going around um, four full times because 24 pi over 3 would be four full rotations. Um, but we're stopping one pi over 3 short from that. So we're going around a bunch of times and then we're stopping pi over 3 short um, of four full rotations. So that means we should terminate in um, quadrant 4 for that one. Right, and then um, cosine of pi over 3. So again, if you don't remember this, you can use your unit circle. Cosine is your x-coordinate. Sine is your y-coordinate. So cosine should be 1 half. But what I forgot to do was check to see if it was positive or negative. So A, smart, trig, class. Cosine is positive in quadrant 4, so it's positive. All right, next one, sine 11 pi over 3. So um, 6 pi over 3 would be one full rotation, and then 12 pi over 3 would be two full rotations. So this stops one short of two full rotations, which means it terminates the same place that our last one terminated. Um, so it's also in Q4. But now we're dealing with sine. A smart trig class. Cosine's positive in there, but sine will be negative in that quadrant. And then sine is going to be root 3 over 2 for um, pi over 3. Alright, and then tangent of 7 pi over 3. So 7 pi over 3 would go around one full time, would be 6 pi over 3, and then it would terminate it just past that in quadrant 1. All of them are positive in this quadrant, so it's going to be positive. And then tangent, if you don't have tangent of pi over 3 memorized, you should try to memorize that. Um, but remember, tangent is just uh, sine over cosine. So sine was uh, root 3 over 2 over cosine, which is uh, 1 half. We can multiply by the reciprocal. Please cancel, we just get root 3. So tangent of pi over 3 is root 3. All right, the last two examples are in um, 
degrees, um, but we can still do them even though they're in degrees. I'm going to graph this just like I did the other ones. Um, 780, I'm just going to subtract 360 a couple times to see um, where that angle is going to terminate. So 780 minus 360 minus 360, I get that it terminates at 60 degrees, which remember is the same as pi over 3. So 60 degrees or pi over 3 is um, your reference angle. And then um, we're doing sine of pi over 3. Remember, they're all positive in quadrant 1. So it's going to be positive. And then um, sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. All right, and then cosine negative uh, 1,200. So with 1,000, sorry, 1,020. With negative 1,020, I'm just going to add 360. Oops negative 1,000, I'm going to add 360 a bunch of times, and I get that it terminates, um, again, in quadrant 1 at 60 degrees. So the reference angle is 60 again, or um, pi over 3, in Q1. And then cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And they're all positive in quadrant 1, so it's going to be positive 1 half. All right, that is it for this section. Um, so pause the video if you need to catch up on this section, and then we're going to move on to quadrantals. All right, so for these, you have no reference angle. You just need to figure out where the angle has landed, north, south, east, or west. And then you use that to help determine um, the value. All right, so tangent of 7 pi over 2. So all the way around a circle would be 4 pi over 2, because that would reduce to uh, 2 pi. So all the way around once would be 4 pi over 2. And then um, this would be an extra pi over 2. So that would be 5 pi over 2. 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2 would terminate here um, going south. So just remember north, south, east, west. Um, remember never eat soggy waffles. At least that's how I was taught to remember it. All right, um, so now we're supposed to find tangent of that. I'm going to write all the coordinate points for each of these. So if we were on uh, the unit circle, this would be the point 1, 0. This would be 0, 1. This would be negative 1, 0. And this down here would be 0, negative 1. Right. Um, so remember, tangent is sine over cosine. Um, sine would be negative 1, because sine is your y-coordinate. Cosine would be 0. Um, negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So your tangent of 7 pi over 2 should be undefined. All right, let's move on and do the next one. Oops. All right, cotangent of 9 pi over 2. So 4 pi over 2 would be one full rotation. 8 pi over 2 would be another rotation. And then um, this is just 1 pi over 2 past that. So we're going to terminate um, going north. And that's going to be the point 0, 1. Uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So if tangent was uh, sine over cosine, which is y over x, then cotangent should be x over y. So 0 over 1, which just equals 0. All right, sine of 31 pi. So 30 pi um, is divisible by 2 pi. So that means that 30 pi would terminate um, after one full rotation, but 31 pi is going to go 1 pi past a full rotation. 
So if we're going one full pi past a full rotation, it's going to terminate going west. Um, and that is the coordinate point negative 1, 0. Uh, remember, sine is your y coordinate, so sine is going to be 0. Uh, cosine of 14 pi. 14 pi is divisible by uh, 2 pi. So that means 14 pi is going to terminate after seven full rotations, it's going to terminate uh, going east. And cosine is your x-coordinate, so cosine of 14 pi is going to be 1. All right, just a couple more. Uh, cosine of 191 pi. So 190 pi would, go, would terminate um, going east because that's divisible by 2 pi. Um, but 191 pi would go a full pi past east, so it would actually terminate going west. And then remember, cosine is your x-coordinate, so this is going to be negative 1. A couple more. Um, sine is 81 pi over 2. So um, 80 pi over 2 would um, reduce to 40 pi, which would be um, 24 rotations. 81 pi over 2 is just 1 pi over 2 past, oops, past a full rotation. So that's going to go around 40 times, and then pi over 2 past that. So it's going to terminate going north, and the y coordinate there for sine is 1. And then tangent of 400 pi. 400 pi is divisible by 2 pi, so that means it's going to end on a complete rotation, so it's going to be going east. And then um, tangent is sine over cosine, so that's going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. All right, that is it for today. Thank you, guys. Uh, make sure to ask questions when you go to class.